God! Now I see you. Please, no, Hurtis. My liver and spleen and kidneys are spitting, boiling with hatred, revenge, violence. Please. My whole insides are like a chemical. Hang on. Darling, what's the matter? You know, it is extraordinary the way you lower class chaps give me these wizard ideas. There was my whole biosystem going into overdrive, sloshing about, hitting the ceiling, when suddenly I think, yes! There's the money. That's where the real money is. Uh, Mr. Kerris. <laughs> oh, McTurk, thank you very much. Well, that's all right. Anytime you want to hijack one of my ideas, now if I could just uh, remove myself from your cabinet. Yeah, not a chance. Potan, sir. Show him in irons. Yeah. Then cock him overboard with those other his lower class friends yes. to dip the wide watery main in an open lifeboat. Oh, oh and thank you for the idea. <laughs> This is terrible. Marvel. The waves are higher than ten decker buses. And we're running out of water. For days and days we drift, bailing out, our throats raw from lack of water, half conscious. Then strange things start to enter our minds, enter our consciousness. Look. What? A strange thing cleaving through the waters towards us. Oh, my God. A huge, awesome creature like an elephant seal or a sperm whale. It's... You're right. Miss, Miss Drum, go! go. Hey! Hello, boys. How would you survive? I have a naturally buoyant personality. Well, we thought you drowned. I threw myself overboard, but my religious principles prevented me from drowning. And God was right in his wisdom. Because this morning, I discover I am able to save the lives of the young men I love, especially one, by leading you to a place of safety. Where's that? I'll tow you there. And the great, kind creature, her white, creamy, generous skin glowing in the water, draws our boat through the waves. And then, as night draws on... What's that? It sounds like... The cha-cha-cha in the middle of the ocean. Look, fishing boats. Old-fashioned wooden boats with oil lamps held above them and out over the water. They're all in a circle. It's the Portuguese fishing fleet. Why the music? They're celebrating their annual festival of Our Lady of a Thousand Haddocks, held far out to sea so no landsman can ever behold the secret mysteries and magic of their rituals. What are all those people doing dancing? They're on the boats. No. It's amazing. They're starting to dance towards us across the water. That's part of this magical world I'm drawing you into. Well, the ocean has become completely calm, glass-like. They're all dressed up in vivid green and purple and red dresses with strange things like bananas, grapes and... Haddocks sticking from their heads. Bestial, hairy sailors dressed up as Carmen Miranda lookalikes. It's like Saturday night in Milton Keynes. Oh, hey, little man, you want to come dance with me? With no sharam. I'm from Vino. And dancing always we dance. Come on. Yeah, let's. Oh, boy. Oh, come on, Chris, if you're going to lose your cherry, you might as well do it in the company of a whole lot of coconuts and bananas. Yeah, let's do it. Yay! What a night. An incredible weaving, swaying fest of flesh and hair and Latin rhythms, maracas and rum bottles flying through the air, concertinas, pineapples, confessions of sudden inchoate love, bulging biceps and hairy bottoms, until suddenly... Margaret, good deal! Look at that! Out from the waters beyond us rises, arms outstretched, this great white female form. Milk shooting from her breasts, sunlight from her vulva, water and fish cascading off her, towering above us in love and splendor and humanity. It's the great one, el señor de los multos nombros, adox. Ay, es... Yes, oh. Miss Patricia Drumgoo. But as we on earth never see her, in all her spiritual beauty, fierce for truth, dogged, eternally trustworthy, a lion in defense of the weak, fountain of all love. Oh, 
Ian. Ian. He's asleep. Wake up, man. Don't pass out. What? Oh, when am I? In a lifeboat without food or water. Oh, I just had the most fantastic dream. What was it? I can't remember. The lifeboat drifts on and on, then hits rocks, sinks. His friends are swept away. Eventually, our hero is washed up on a beach. He drags himself from the sea, exhausted, his clothing torn to shreds. He passes out. The next thing he knows, he is coming round in a hospital bed. You. Yes, me. Police Chief, now President for Life, Connie Boone. Don't send me back to jail. I have no intention of doing that. Haven't you heard? We're at war. War? Yes, war. Terrible war. The machinations of evil men and women, Bernard Coates' arms sails, had finally led to all-out war. You'll be joining my army. Report to the recruitment center by 1300 hours. Ain't it amazing how all three of us survived? Yeah, and should end up in the same regiment. Field Marshal Boone's private regiment. I'm seeing more service between the sheets than on the field. But you smell gorgeous. And you're not missing anything. Oh. No. I was on this patrol. We were ambushed, and I only survived by running away. I was hiding under this haystack. The sergeant found me. But what did you do? Shot her. God, this is a filthy war. Mud everywhere, bodies. No end to the fighting. Anyone see Mr. Ongul? No. I miss her. Yeah, her spontaneous compassion, gentleness. Those lovely cups of tea she used to brew. I hope she's all right. I miss her too. Come on, you soldiers. The tide of history is with women. We cannot be opposed. Our ideology is sounder. Look at the lovely uniforms we let you wear. The thrilling jackets and caps and boots. The knapsacks. And each of you has your own individual union jill to wave. Get out there, men, and kill more men. There's we are men. She doesn't realise that. She doesn't care. Matronising Carl. First chance I get, I'm deserting to the other side. You can get shot for that. We're going to get shot anyhow. Confusion reigns everywhere. Shells, land, cities and towns are torn apart. Everywhere the dead lie unburied. Mud spreads across a shell-holed landscape. Lorries and tanks and infantry churn through waterlogged wastelands. Oh, this camp we're going to is no different from the previous one. It's nearer the enemy. The chances of being killed are even greater. What happened to that little corporal you were keen on? She was drafted home on compassionate grounds. Her husband had dyed his hair and gone on the streets. Uh, it always happens in wartime, when the women are away. If only we could desert. What's this coming towards us? Just another lorry. A Red Cross lorry. It looks lighter, more cheerful. See, a tiny ray of sunlight spears through the clouds and plays on it. Hi, boys! Mr. Mr. Patricia! Where are you going? Wherever you are. Want to ride? Rather. I never say no to a ride. <clears throat> We're going to dessert. That's handy. I've got to cross the enemy lines to sing to a man who's dying. Is that what you do? Yes. In the midst of all this carnage, I do a bit of nursing. But mainly I go and sing to the poor, terrified men who are about to go into the darkness. I hope my little bit of light will help guide them through the trials and tribulations of the worlds beyond. We have enough trials and tribulations here. Indeed. But well, how did you survive? I was rescued by a passing roll-on, roll-off ferry. It rolled over, so I had to swim the rest of the way. But it was worth it, just for the sight of you, Ian McTurk. Will you kiss me? I fancy another. But do you love her? Night. Barbed wire. Dugouts. 
the sound of shells landing, flashes on the horizon. Miss Dromgoul's lorry stops at a checkpoint. All right. An aged sentry comes over to check their documents. All passes, please. Excuse me, but weren't you the Lord Mayor of the town where we were born, responsible for all the woes that have since befallen us, who later became involved in a plot to assassinate the Prime Minister, your wife? How kind of you to remember. What are you doing as a guard? I thought you were a wanted man. I was reconciled to my wife shortly after her death. It's always easier then. As a result, she withdrew all charges. I returned to a life of breathtaking crime on the stock market, but unfortunately met an even bigger crook than myself, Bernard Coates. Bernard Coates. With the result, I am now penniless and about to desert to the other side so I can fight against the armies of my enemy. Benjamin. We're going to desert as well. What good fortune for me. Hang on. There's only one snag. What's that? The road we're on is heavily mined. What? Stop the lorry immediately. No, go on. I want to escape. No, reverse. I don't want to die. Stop the lorry or we'll all be. How'd you find this hospital? It's a bit different from all the others I've been in. How's that? It's still got a roof and walls. That's better. I feel more at home. Incidentally, which side are we on? The men's. But we're thinking of escaping. We've got an ambulance outside. Where are we going? Somewhere. There's got to be somewhere better than this. Our trusty threesome jump into the ambulance and make their getaway. But little do they know that not far off, at the Women's Supreme Army Headquarters, deadly plans are getting laid. Girls, this is it. The mystery stroke that'll win the war. A sudden, devastating artillery bombardment on this single short stretch of highway here. Her brutal nicotine-stained finger stabs at a roadway on the map. The very piece of roadway that... At least you feel reassured in the men's army. There are so many more ambulances about. Oh, don't talk to me about ambulances. It reminds me of poor Miss Drumgoul. <sighs> I wonder what's ever happened to her. She was thrown an awful long way up in the air. But we never saw her land. Perhaps she became the angel. She always was. Ian McTurk, are those tears in your eyes? No, never. These are no times for tears. Well, at least we got away from the fighting. <laughs> oh, me. I think I've lost my leg. Oh, I've lost the hands. But don't worry, there's lots of ambulances about. Here comes some stretcher bearers. Don't worry, we'll get you on this stretcher. Ah! Get them all into the ambulance. Oh! oh. oh. OK, shut the doors. Charge. Soon have you in safety. This time I'm definitely missing an arm and the odd kidney. Some of me head is off. Everything beneath my belly band's gone AWOL. Don't worry. I can see hundreds and hundreds of ambulances coming over the hill to pick us up. What a relief. Here you are. We're here to get you to safety. Get them in the ambulances, men. Thank God. No. Oh. Everything's going to be OK. Oh. I'm so lucky to be such an optimist. There you are. Right, shut the doors, men. Let's be off. Is that your foot lying by your leg? Or is it mine? I don't think either of them are ours, actually. <gasps> It's probably mine. His snails need cotton. They probably won't ever need cotton again. Look, over there. The little toe my mum used to hang on to going, wee, 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 wee. And there's my left ear. Keep a grip on yourself. I can't, there's nothing in me left to get a hold on. I've completely disintegrated as a person. What are we gonna do? What's that? Oh no. Thousands and thousands more ambulances. We must put ourselves together, escape. Oh, we're completely finished. How? 
crawl away. With what? Ian, can I borrow your leg? Yeah, give me a hand. Here. Have we got the gust for this? Well, there's mine hanging on the old barbed wire. How about... Thanks. Chris, that hand of yours. Oh. Get it a walk over here. Oi, stop giving me the elbow. If someone put it near me, crying, I could get me balls rolling. Slowly, painfully, <laughs> our hero's various body parts start to work downhill. But too late, the wheels of massed ambulances grind down our heroes, mash down appendixes, false teeth, livers, rib cages into eternal mud, eternal darkness. Nothingness. There is nothingness. Nothingness upon nothingness. Then, suddenly, light. There is light, and out of the light comes a voice. Hello? Hello? Oh. Hello? <laughs> there it counts. Oh. What are you doing? Lifting your left eyeball into a suitable metallic receptacle <gasps> while knitting your entire central nervous system into an artificial intelligence interface. <laughs> you what? Where am I? A, a hospital operating table. Oh. A hospital operating table with a difference. What the hell was going on? Oh, well, it was you who gave me the idea. Uh, remember when I was so jealous? Beating at your door? Yes. Hmm? My insides were ripping themselves apart, oh. boiling like barattic. Oh. And suddenly I thought, what an awful, inefficient economic unit the human body is. Oh. Instead of grinding itself to death with emotions, feelings, sensuality, why is it making a profit? You what? A profit for me. I started to see this wonderful creation. Different functions, body parts, consumer durables, brought together. Hearts, stomachs, oh, lots and lots of stomachs. Oh. Uh, satellite dishes, fast food inlets, swift sewage outlets. Oh. Even specially prepared erogenous zones complete with multi-packed penises. Oh. <laughs> and each tiny motion and trickle of this extraordinary organism monitored, metered, charged for, so that blood cannot flow, oxygen inhale, sperm spout without I, myself, its creator, its controlling genius, charging for, making a profit from that action. Oh, <laughs> this is me you're talking about. What do I look like? Uh, a colossal conglomerate of flesh, gristle, and vacuum cleaner parts. Be more specific. The Glastonbury Festival in a wheelchair. A wheelchair? Yes. Ah, uh, well. Unfortunately, your design still has a bit of mobility downside. Translate. We haven't quite worked out your propulsion system. None of your 12 legs seem to reach the ground at the same time. Oh. Uh, but, but I brought up this job lot of old supermarket trolleys, fitted some old electric lawnmower engines. Trolleys? Engines? Uh, yeah, no, 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 no just... You're not sending me out into the world like this, are you? With your 17 arms, strange distribution of body hair, and complete collection uh, of Jeffrey Archer novels, yes. Bastard. Well, one has to be cruel to be successful. Oh, Bye! And so our hero, or at least part of our hero, jolts forth, wheels screeching, short-circuiting, into the world outside. As he waits, two other trolleys join him from the factory. Jack? Ian? Chris? Ian? I feel like a turkey having sex with a Dalek. Thank God my old mum can't see me now. This is our new world. It is, no, isn't it? London's almost deserted. No traffic. Almost everyone seems to have died in the wars. But one person will still be alive. Who? The woman I love, Rowena. Not her. All our disasters are down to the fact that you love that awful woman. Look, over there, a rose garden. 
she must be there. We'll be waiting out here for when she turns you down. Again. Moonlight, dark leaves, roses, a nightingale. Faintly blown by the wind comes the tinkle of sophisticated conversation. McTurk squeaks along beside Rowena, beneath a rose arbor. I love you, Rowena. Despite one ghastly, indeed disgusting wounds sustained in the recent hostilities and the heinous medical experiments of your husband... Ian! Rowena? I don't love you. I never have loved you. I just once fancied a quick piece of working glass rough. Bitch. It's time I was going. It's getting cold. No. Let go. Let go, you freak! With 17 hands and an improbable <laughs> array of penises, I have you at my mercy, Rowena Torrance. I can do with you what I will, but that's not my purpose. What is? I'm going to open you up. Pardon? I wish to find out exactly what's inside you. What's that you're waving above your head? You know, I come complete with my own national health. Do it yourself and stop wasting the taxpayers' money surgery kit. <laughs> This is a very large and uh, oh, lethally sharp scalpel come electric drill mixed with a micro probe and camera. I'm I'm going inside you. No! Oh, no! Ah, yes, God, your heart. What a private education does for you. Heart of steel. My mother would be proud. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You're opening. I don't want you looking in there. No, oh. please. Hey, here we go. <laughs> Oh, my God. Don't! There's nothing in here. You're completely empty. I'm not! I'm the most advanced woman in the world. Vast, vast spaces of absolutely nothing. Shut up! I've been in love with nothing, an illusion, a non-entity. How dare you! Close me up immediately. Okay. I'm the most advanced woman in the world. I'll be a Channel 5 newscaster, a Damien Hirst exhibit, a new Labour frontbencher on... Just about anything. I'm going. You'll never be rid of me. I'll be on endless arts programs with Melvin Bragg, sign pompous letters to the Guardian with with Sir David Hare and and, and Sir Ian McEwan. I'll, I'll. So it's us back on the street. Right. Just like when we were kids, back home in the town where we were born. I've made a lot of mistakes in my life. What's the biggest? I. I don't want to say. When I find myself in times of trouble, Mother Mary comes to me, seeking words hey, of wisdom. Who's singing that song? Let it Voice be. sounds familiar. It's, uh, it's, it's, let it be. It's Miss Patricia Trongo. Let it be, let it be, seeking words of wisdom. Let she sings be. beautifully. Brings lumps to my bladder. I am the walrus. Bad. You what? I suddenly realise what I've been all my life. I am he as you are, he as you are, me as we are all together. Boys, how are you? Ian McTurk, how are you? I'm fine. What are you doing? There's always so much to be done on this earth. I'm sitting off to try to do it. Patricia Drumgool, let the two of us get married and drench the world in our children. No. What? No. I will not marry you. Why should I marry you when there are so many human souls around? That's right. I was up in the marrier. Shut up, Chris, or short circuit your trolley. I had expectations too. I love you, Ian McTurk. More than all the galaxies, stars, and the vast eternities of space. But now bits of you are spread everywhere. She's right. Your bloody ears growing out of my right elbow. So? In loving everyone with my great white milky body and soul, I love only you. And in loving only you with my warm, sweet lips and great, generous vagina, I love everyone. God is infinite, and so are we. He can never have enough of our loving. We can never have enough of his. I'll marry all three of you. It will never be allowed. You'd be surprised. The supreme leader. Who? Call me Boo? She's just decreed that women can have as many husbands as they like. I'll marry you all! Oh, good, a wedding! And what a wedding! There is a most fashionable congregation. Father Brodie stands at the altar with his prayer book open. 
a rustle of anticipation as the great doors swing open. And into the church, led by the ex-mayor and broken-down tobacconist of the town where all were born, comes the bride, Miss Dromgool, radiant. She arrives at the altar, turns and gives all three bridegrooms a wondrous smile. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here in the sight of God and in the face of this congregation to join together these men and this woman in holy matrimony. Ian, John, Christopher, wilt thou have this woman to thy wedded wife? We will. We will. Patricia, wilt thou have these men to thy wedded husbands? I will. I will. I will. <laughs> Going? The honeymoon, you mean? Yes. We've booked the Albert Hall. How wonderful. Here we are now. It's all been done up specially. Great. Look at that. The whole of the central area is now a huge, enormous bed. Vast enough for all of us with all our multiple organs and appliances to bounce up and down on, to conjoin and conjugate and copulate with you in our centre. Now we know how many holes it takes to fill the Albert Hall. At last, our reunion. I'll be in the centre. You'll be in the centre. Oh, bliss! Oh, joy! Bed springs eternal. And so at last, our heroes and heroine are reconciled, rejoined, rejoiced in many and fascinating ways and angles and imaginations. Huge rhythms and energies are unleashed and shudder across the bed. Oceans and Niagara Falls of passion and love and fulfillment. And in the midst, triumphant, rising above the appliances and tubing and groping and hairiness, and then slipping back in like a dolphin, a mackerel, is Our Lady of the Sorrows, Our Lady of Joy, Our Lady of Old Age, Our Lady of Youth, squealing and giggling and roaring with lust and pleasure and fulfilment. Oh, Miss Patricia, oh, you are filled oh, full. Oh, I can never be yeah. full of your love, and my turkey. Love on! Love on! Joe Orton's Up Against It was adapted for radio by John Fletcher. The cast in order of appearance was Kenneth Cranham as the mayor, Joseph Fiennes as Christopher Lowe, Leo McKern as the narrator, Louise Lombard as Rowena Torrance. Douglas Hodge played Ian McTurk, Jacinta Mokaki played Patricia Dromgool, and Mark Lambert was Father Brodie. Sylvia Sims played Connie Boone, and David Calder was Bernard Coates. Prunella Scales played the Prime Minister, and Damon Albarn was Jack Ramsey. Other roles were played by Alan Mitchell, Edward Holston, and Mark Webb. And special thanks to Sir John Gielgud and Joe Dowling. Up Against It was directed by John Adams, and was an Armada production for BBC Radio 3. <laughs>